Happy day, digital world. It's Data Viz Bob here. And this time we have an interesting question from somebody whose name I can't pronounce. Suraj Kaushal. Suraj, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a master's student trying to write his thesis in multi-field visualization from the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore, India. Suraj, congratulations on being the first student that asks a question that's not from Swansea University. So this is the first time I'm answering a question from abroad. I have some colleagues in India doing visualization, doing great visualization stuff including scientific and information visualization and I wish we had more students, hardworking students from India here in the UK, it would be really great. So Suraj asked me if I could explain the idea behind the Wasserstein metric, uh, what, it, what it means and, and, and how to understand it and some insight into possibly how to compute it. So I've broken down a summary into three parts. The conceptual part, the mathematical part, and the computing part. And I'll explain why I have these three parts as we go along. So let's start. Let me uh, grab a quick drink of my tea. I need some fuel. So imagine, imagine we want to compute a distance. So this is this is a way of computing a distance between distributions. But before we talk about computing a distance between distributions, we can just start with computing or thinking about a conventional distance. So imagine, this is an amazing sketch of the UK and the US. So imagine we want to know the distance between, for example, London and Boston. Right? The distance might look like that. That's supposed to be London and that's supposed to be Boston. Maybe you have to fly between those two cities. Maybe. Now if somebody asked you What's the distance between London and Boston? Probably you'd have no trouble answering that question. Right, you, could, you would imagine getting in a plane probably at Heathrow Airport, and then the plane flies and lands at Logan, right? And you would think about the distance along a curve between Logan and Heathrow and you might look that up, right? Maybe it's 6,000 kilometers or something like that. I should know the distance, but I can't remember, but it's something like that. So it's, it's not too difficult to answer that question because it's, the answer is given by a curve. Literally, it's given by a line, but if we're flying in a plane, we're, we're looking at the length of a curve. So it's a simple question. What if somebody asked the question though, what's the distance between the UK and the US? That's a more complicated and confusing question, right? Because if we're, this, the UK is a region and the US is a region or an area. So how would you compute the distance between two regions? Right? There are different ways to do that. And how, does, how do we compute it in such a way that it makes sense? So for example, you could compute just the closest distance and use that as your answer. Right? You could try to compute the distance between the centroids of the US and the UK. That could be another answer. You could try to compute an average distance between the US and the, the UK and how would you compute an average distance? Maybe one approach 
would be to divide up the U.S. into into small chunks, right? And to divide up the U.K. into small chunks, and then compute the distance between all the small chunks, and then take an average, something like that. So to com compute the distance between two points, it's, we understand that, but then to compute the distance between two areas in the, is more complicated, right? It's, it's more confusing, it's harder to understand, and that's what the Wasserstein metric is about, computing the distance between two distributions. In this case, it's land mass distributions. This is also called, in computer science, the earth mover's distance because it's a computation of how much work would it take to move all of the Earth from the UK to the US, for example, right? If we were to, to move all the land mass, and that would be called, that would be the, the Earth mover's distance. Now, when people discuss distributions, the first thing that they do is they come up with mathematical descriptions of distributions, they start to talk about the mathematics behind distributions. So I've just drawn here some very common mathematical descriptions of common distributions like Gaussian distribution. Right? This is a this is also known as a normal distribution and it's also like the perfect distribution or it has a lot of great properties, a, a lot of nice properties. This is an, a picture of another distribution called a bimodal or bimodal or multimodal distribution, right? That has more than one peak. This only has one peak and then it gradually falls off. This has two peaks and gradually falls off with a valley in the middle. And just for fun, I tried to draw a random distribution, right? And this is how distributions are usually described in mathematics. So the question turns into how do you compute the distance between distributions mathematically? By the way, the, the other part of this is distance is also can, can be called similarity. So if the distance is zero, in other words, they are two of the same distribution, then the similarity is identical. And the further the distance is, the less similar the distributions are. So it's a measure of dissimilarity as well. So it's very it's very useful and very common. The world of mathematics is nice, but in reality, if we want to compute a distance, we need to go to the world of computing, computer science, which is of course the best the best topic, the best subject. In order to compute distances between distributions, we have to discretize them. So I've tried to draw a discretized version of a Gaussian distribution and a bimodal distribution. And this is sort of an approximation of what they would look like when you discretize them, right? So you approximate this curve with a set of bars and the height of which approximates the Gaussian curve, or you try to approximate the Gaussian curve with those with those bars, right? Now, let's look at, now by the way, this this distribution, this is also a histogram, right? So you can make a hit, we all, we're all familiar with histograms, and we can make a histogram out of any attribute, or any, any set of data. Now to compute the Wasserstein metric, we're not going to go over an exact solution. What I'm going to do is I'll, in the comments of this video, I'm going to put a link to a paper that shows an exact solution. But I'm just going to outline here an approximate, the, the, the way you can approach a solution, right, to, to compute this distance. So we have a discretization of, the, of this distribution and the bimodal distribution, and we have a set of bars. We can break those bars up into little pieces, right? Each bar has a height of h, 
and the height of a piece inside the bar is dy, right? And the distance, we can say that the distance between the two distributions is d, right? Or, or, or along the x-axis. So the distance from this piece to this piece might look like, for example, dy times d, right? Now, if we want to add up the distance of every piece inside this bar, right? We break the bar up into pieces and then we move them all to the other side. For example, that's going to look something like this. So we have dy1 plus dy2, so on to dyh, that's the sum of these pieces, times d. In other words, that looks like in computer science, that's notated like this. Right? We have dy, which is a function of, of x times d, and we sum up all these pieces. For example, from i equals 1 to i equals h. Right? That's what that looks like. So we sum the distance of moving each individual piece along this bar to the other side or to the other distribution. That's one, that's one part of the computation or the basic computation. But that's only one bar. Right? We have a number of bars here. Right? And the width, we can call the width of the bar of a bar dx. So actually we have a number of bars. We have, for example, dx1, dx2, until dx, for example, w, assuming w is the width of, of, of the number of bars. And in computer science, we write, we write that like this. To sum up those bars, we have, for example, j equals 1 to j equals w dx of j, right? This should be dx of i. And when we combine this sum with this sum, it looks like this. j equals 1 to j equals w, dyi times d, and then we put in another d, d in there, dx, j. So the distance is going to look something like this, something like that. And that's how we would compute or go about computing. That's not an exact solution. And there are more than one ways to, to compute the distance, but that's the idea behind computing the solution. Some, some things to consider. Well, how does this relate to visualization? Well, any data attribute can be plotted as a histogram, any data, right? So we can compare two data attributes by plotting the histograms and then computing the Wasserstein district metric or the earth mover's distance between them. And then we get a similarity measure of those two data attributes. For example, temperature and pressure, right? And velocity and vorticity, for example. Any two multi-field attributes Another common 
way to use this is to measure the similarity between two images, right? Two pictures. So the the in the link to the description of this video, I'm going to put in a link to a paper that uses this metric, the Wasserstein metric, to compute the similarity between images, right? And then you can imagine it's very easy to imagine this being used in lots of different applications. For example, when you ask Google to search for an image, you input an image into Google and ask Google to search for similar images, they might use something like the Wasserstein metric as one of their approaches to find similar, similar images. Another one thing I think I wanted to mention but I forgot is these are these are the discretized versions of the of the distributions the smaller dy is the more accurate the approximation is going to be and the smaller dx is the more accurate the approximation is going to be however the smaller dy and dx are the longer the computation is going to take so there's a trade-off between accuracy and computation speed okay i hope that helped and now when you start to read about the Wasserstein metric or the Arpuwa's distance in a, in a scientific paper, I think it's going to make a lot more sense now. And thanks for watching and thanks for your attention. If you have any more questions, just let me know.